Talk Me? about the cars um, I basically run the EVH heads, um, do a GCX, uh, basically I have a few pedals uh, in the rack. I got a Phase 90, uh, TC electronic delay. Um, actually, no, I think I switched that delay. But um, you know, I, run, I run minimal effects. I have a whammy, but I use a volume pedal for the expression for that and run that MIDI through there. and. Uh, Basically, just not. I don't have that much going on. I just got a, you know a wah pedal and it basically a rag mount wah pedal, and you know it's it's pretty minimal. And I run yeah, you know, we're just one four twelve through that, and um, I'm actually getting ready to expand it a little bit to run two different heads and kind of get a wider sound going. But right now it's very simple, very scaled back, just to to keep things simple. Mm -hmm. Less things, less problems. You right. Know. What are the heads? It's EVH. Okay. Uh, What's 51, 53? The only 58. one they make. Well, the only, one the they only 100 watt they make, because now they make a 50 watt, so technically right. they make two yeah, yeah, so. Modded at all? Or no, not start? modded at all. Yeah. Just uh, come pretty They stock. come modded from the factory. Yeah. <laughs> <They're pretty hot. laughs> as modded as they need <laughs> to be. They're as modded as... Yeah. If they're modded enough for A. Van Halen, they're probably good enough yeah. for, for us. <laughs> but yeah, when they come from the factory, they're pretty... pretty. I mean, for what we need gain-wise, it's mm. completely... There's, there's plenty of gain to go around with those amps, so we don't need any kind of a... Boost or anything like that, but you know, that's pretty much it for my bit. Okay, guitar. Uh, this is my my signature series. <coughs> it's actually getting ready to come out, and it's a uh, basically kind of they blended. Um, you know, I, for the question we get most is, you know, how do you how do you maintain the low tunings and how do you you know get you know a guitar usually you know, people have a lot of trouble for I guess for a lot of kids have a lot of trouble just getting it to stay in tune when it with a drop C sharp or drop A sharp or you know drop B so basically it's a 25 and a half inch scale length uh, mahogany body rosewood fretboard wide fat neck um, you know we've got this custom inlays we put together it's kind of like a CL and but um, you know it just I got a HFS stock pickup here a bass vintage here um, you know, uh, it's a it's a pretty pretty awesome guitar, and you know the the good thing is the 25 and a half inch scale link kind of helps it maintain that low tuning, and mm -hmm. they actually ship these out in a drop B tuning, so the guitars are already set up usually, and they come with the big strings too. Yeah, yeah, they come so, with the actual yeah. gauges that we use, which are uh, I think it's a 56, 44, 32, 22, 15, that that's a 13 and 11 on mine. Okay. So I have two different two different sets of strings for my guitars, but. That's it. Basically, ships out with exactly the way that I would play it, and uh, so I think that's the, the thing that's going to separate it from. You know, usually they typically sell, send it out in a standard tuning for you know Paul Reed does. So this with would be tens, the first, yeah, 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 exactly. And then you put the heavy strings on. You're like, oh, what's going on? Are they all going to be opaque finishes, or are they going to do some with with fancier tops? No, this will be. This is. They're going to try this one, and they may they may do a, re a reversal where it's white and blow with the, yeah, the black stripes. Yeah, yeah. Flip flop. Yeah. Yeah, but they're just going to put this out and see how it does and uh, we're excited with there's a lot of people are trying to check out the is guitar. Is that the only one out with you right now? No, actually two of them out with me right now. This one this one was the actual Korean version and the other one that they had when I was get, I went to the PRS experience and they were getting ready to they didn't have the guitars from Korea yet. There was a hiccup in that. So they built this other one that I had, you know, and but it's an exact like duplicate of the Korean model. They just did it in the factory, and t within like 24 hours, they built the guitar. So it's it's a uh, it's pretty cool. But yeah, this is the actual one that that people can buy. There's no there's no it's not a private stock at all. It's mm -hmm. absolutely straight. Mm -hmm. You know what the what people will buy. You know, and yeah. it's still a great guitar. And, yeah, you yeah. want it available to the most people possible. As yeah, to exactly. Pricing it where only a collector can afford sure. it. And th there'll be some private you know <coughs> private stock ones that they'll do, and then you know with. With a little bit of more, you know, more the components will be a little better, and you know, I don't know, but I mean, it just depends on. But for the price range for the guitar, it's a great guitar. You know. Yeah. Do you know what they're pricing it at? I think it's around eight fifty, something yeah, like that. Nice. Yeah, yeah. I told them in the, going into it that we're a blue collar band. You know, I don't, I don't want, I don't want you to have to be a you know right. doctor, or lawyer to buy a guitar. And a lot of the clientele for parades are, are good, you know, people that are just they have a lot of, you know. A lot of extra income to buy a guitar, and you know, for these, we you know, we want people to be able to afford them, the younger kids and and the, and the older people, you know. Yeah. But uh, still, but still not losing so much quality. So. Right. Nice. Other than PRSs, do you have what other guitars in your rig? 
Um, this is I'll, I play a PRS exclusively. I've got a, a couple custom 22s that I've had for a long time. A couple that I just retired that I've had pretty much my entire career with PRS, and uh, I'm switching them out with these. I'm going to try to play these for a while exclusively, but um, there's a couple, man, that I just have that just sound great, that are just like comfortable guitars for me to play, and I just do like the sentimental value to them as well. They're just mm -hmm. great. They play, they, they feel good, and the weight's perfect and everything. So. Do you buy those new back in the day? Or? No, uh, actually, PR, I've been with PRS a long time, and they've always, they've all, you know, I've endorsed them for a while, but there's a couple that I'd actually bought. There's one blue one that I, I bought, and I remember, like, stressing over the money is when we first came out, we were like, you know, doing odd jobs to survive, and I actually bought that guitar, so I really appreciate That's it. That's a 22, now. you said? Yeah, it's yeah. a custom 22, yeah. yeah. Beautiful, but uh, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, a cool yeah. When you, when you, you know, when you earn the money for the guitar, you oh, yeah. really, really appreciate yeah. it. You know? Where'd you get it? Oh man, I, I think I bought it in a, a music store in Atlanta, Georgia. Is that American music? Yeah, 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 West yeah, sold it yeah, to yeah, me. Exactly, West. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. yeah, it's been a while, but it's cool. Yeah. Any, uh, any fodder for the vintage geeks? Do you have an old Les Paul at home, or a oh, Junior, or a Strat, or a Telly? I, I wish, man. I'm like, I'm one of those guys. I completely appreciate. An older guitar. My dad played guitar. Yeah, he used to have it. He had a, a gold top Les Paul that I would die to have now. 1960, I think it was. I don't know. But I'm not like that much of a guitar kind of. John, you know, he's more of the guitar guy. He knows like you know all these vintage, you know, vintage guitars, and I love them. I love old Tellys. I love old Fender Strats, and but I don't own any of them. Mm -hmm. You know, it's weird. It's like well, I'm not a guitar collector, and if I'd have had half the ones that I I've had in my possession over the years. It'd be great. But, did you learn to play in your dad's old gold top? Or yeah, I mean, he had a couple different ones that he that he had. He had a Chet Atkins that I just loved to play. When it was easier on my fingers, you know, it was mm -hmm. the nylon strings. And, yeah, it was cool. Oh, one of those one of those acoustic electric. Yeah, ones? yeah, oh, okay. exactly. Okay. Yeah, I was thinking sixty one twenty. I was like, oh no, man, yeah, that's not I easy still got to play. One of those jets. I use it to death. Yeah, it, it's just it's really cool because it's like when I need an acoustic, it sits right there in the stand. Mm -hmm. It's really easy to play. Yeah. I can plug it in so I can go DI into the tools and yeah, yeah. It's, it, we've actually I, we used it on that that uh, seasons tour um, when we did the the South Side thing, mm -hmm. and I wore that thing out. I love that chat for nice. that. You know, yeah. you don't have to worry about the sound hole and any of that stuff. So <laughs> it's got some advantages for sure. And, uh, you know, when we did the last Cold Dead Memory, Johnny K, he's a guitar collector, and he had an enormous amount of guitars to pick from. And I think he had a hundred Les Pauls. Yeah, I mean, it was like unbelievable. So we used yeah, a few of those. You know, stupid his collection. Huh. Yeah. But I, you know, I, I appreciate. I mean, I love. You know, classic guitars are just. You know, I love them, and maybe at one point I'll start trying to collect again. But you know, it's just one of those things. It, it's it's my instrument. It's my. It's my tool for my yeah, job, yeah, but tool. You know, yeah. I'm more into the studio, buying you know studio gear mm -hmm. and that kind of thing, that side of the engineering aspect of it. I'm more Guitar's into not it. necessarily a hobby when you're not working. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Like, yeah. But I love it, you know, but I, and I appreciate it. And people have shown me, you know, really nice guitars. I'm like, man, I got to have that. But <laughs> I don't ever, you know, I don't go to the next level. Cool. John? Uh, all right, well, rig-wise, uh, so real similar to Clint, I'm um, using the EVH 5153s. Um, single head, single cab, we've got two out there. We're just kind of running one as a backup. Um, we've run the two heads uh, before. Single cab works. I mean, like Clint said, we're probably going to expand, get some, you know, back line back out, and probably just start to run two. Um, it's always nice to run two because if anything happens, you don't really <laughs> notice so much, mm -hmm. you know, when your rig shuts down, so mm -hmm. that's the upside of it. But yeah, I mean, they, they come out of the factory so screaming hot. I either use the, the blue channel, um, gained up pretty good, or I use the red channel with the gain sitting like on 10 or 11 o'clock max. I mean, if we ever go any higher than that, then that means that there's something going on with the guitars. Right. I, you know, there's no functionality for me to go beyond noon on that red channel. I can understand where Eddie does, where he's doing all the legato stuff and, you know, needs that molten, you know, yeah. lava gain. But <laughs> the nice thing about it is those amps are really cool. Like when you, if you rail it and, you know, obviously if you let the guitar go, it's going to go nuts. But if you actually play it, it's still got a ton of clarity to have that much gain. I don't know how they figured that into the equation. But that's the one thing about those heads that I love the most is just... For us to be as tuned down as, as far as we are, there's just a lot more clarity. Like you can hear the individual notes inside the chords. Where it, and I didn't notice it so much until I went back and I played some of my older amps in comparison, and it's night and day. Yeah. You know. So for us tuned down to the key of Z flat, you know, squared, it definitely helps out. You know. But other than that, it's um, 
wah whammy. Um, I'm using a slash wah right now. I've gone through a couple of different wahs and I'm kind of digging the sweep on the slash wah. I really like my full tones, but they're a little finicky. Um, I got to send them in to get them kind of worked on. Other than that, uh, it's delay. I think my delay is a TC, uh, time factor. I got that one because it can do tap tempo on its MIDI. Um, I just recently retired the Phase 90 and in exchange for the Mojo Hand Effects Nebula, which is basically like the Phase 100. It gives you just one extra little bit of control. <laughs> okay. I don't know that it's that much different, but it's a cool pedal, you know, and the guys are cool, so that's, that's in the rig now. Um, I think the only other crazy stuff I got in there, I do have an ultimate octave, a full tone, which is really cool and original. It's real noisy and I can only use it for a couple things because it sounds like the end of the world, but mm -hmm. it's always great at the end of the show. You hit all the pedals and push that one on last and it just sounds like, you know, Mars attacks or something. But um, yeah, I mean, it's, I guess, I don't know. It's, it's weird. It's like the older I get, the less effects I seem to gravitate towards, you know, it's just the basics mm -hmm. and stuff to kind of cover more of the catalog. You know, because, oh, yeah, we used a phaser here, you used something here. Big Muff is a cool... Big Muff, yeah. you know, things like that. But as far as the rig goes, it's real straightforward. Most of the stuff in the top is all just about upkeep more than anything. You know, I got a drummer gate, which basically serves all the power in the joint, and then I have a little decimator on the front end, which I can kind of tweak and kind of keep this thing a little more reeled in. Mm -hmm. And other than that, it's the GCX, same as Clint. Um, just to kind of, you know, keep individual loops. It's, see, at first I was the guy who threw all the pedals down on the floor and, you know, like once you get four pedals in, all of a sudden your signal starts to do something strange and you're just like, oh man, if I could just, you know, figure out how to do it. And I didn't want to take the, the step into the GCX world because I was like, this seems like it's making way more of a problem potentially than it solves, but it's cool, you know, because they're individual loops. So if one particular loop isn't working, your whole rig isn't going to be mm. out of commission for it. So for that, more it, practical for what it's we do. Way more yeah. practical, yeah. yeah. So now that I've seen the light, I'm like I'm all about the the GCX. But that's that's pretty much it. I mean, right. it's it's pretty straightforward. Um, I'm not even using a wireless at this point because for whatever reason, the last couple wirelesses we've been using in the rig just for some reason or another. They didn't like something in the chain, so I've been on a cable until I figure out which one's like going to tone stiller. Right. Right. What's that? It's like a tone stiller. It is, yeah, it is. Even, even the, the, the higher end ones? The higher end ones are way better. I've, I've, there's, we don't, we're not rolling with the higher end. Like the but, but the funny thing is, the one here. that I want to buy is actually about half the price of the ones that we actually had out on the road with us. Now, granted, they're you know, probably six, seven years old, and I know that a lot of stuff's changed with yep. the frequencies, yep. and you know, so. You know, I'm sure a lot of this stuff is probably what's available and what they're actually selling as far as the bandwidth and stuff like that. So, yeah, we, you kind of have to keep up with the newer stuff to be able to get stuff that is going to stay out of, you know, CB radios or whatever. Yeah, cell um, phones or whatever Exactly, it is all that stuff. Yeah. But, but our rigs are pretty straightforward, you know. Um, Guitar-wise, this, uh, this will be the signature. This is the JCZ. Um, this is the first version of it. This is a US version. Um, we have a, an import version that's basically the same thing as this, except for two major differences. Um, they put the dot inlays on it. I kind of went back and forth about the dot inlays, whether I was gonna have them or whether I wasn't gonna have them. And the funny thing about these guitars is when you actually stand up and play them, you can't really see the fretboard because the guitar falls away. Right. It falls into your hand. So you're always staring at the back of the neck and these dots up here. So I was like, it might be cool just to do something from a look-wise that didn't have anything. And of course, everybody loved it. And you know, the Dean folks sat me down and said, you're gonna have a real hard time selling anything that doesn't have any inlays whatsoever. So <laughs> I was like, okay. So on the import version, we have the dots. Um, I have two of those. And uh, the only other difference between that one and this one is the imports are 24 fret. This one is 22. Okay. Um, it was kind of a pain in the butt to get this neck actually to do a 22 fret. It hadn't been done before, so we just did it. We tried it. They're standard uh, D wide necks, the 25 and a half inch scale, same thing with Clint. Um, and it's a D real wide one, but 24 fret is pretty much a standard thing for them. 22 fret is something they had to do a little different. So, How do um, they make it work? Right. So what they're going to do is we're going to focus on the import version, um, Korean version, mm -hmm. similar to the SE. Um, Dean actually makes three, and I don't know that we're going to do a Japanese because it's kind <coughs> of in the middle, but they make a Korean, which would be around 800 bucks. 
and then they'll make this available, which, you know, I don't know if anyone's going to spend, you know, $3,000 for a USA, one of these. Someone but, will. One person will. Right. One person <laughs> probably will. But we'll probably sell a lot more of the imports. And i got to be honest with you, I did the whole new 7 Dust record on my newest import, $800 guitar, and I mean, it just slammed out of the gate. I mean, we just, we used it. We didn't ask questions. It was just working. You know, kind of wanted to see if it would do it. Um, and, you know, I mean, for me, it's, it, it, it does the same thing like Clint said, you know, the 25 and a half inch scale is like the one step towards a baritone, but you're not committing. Yeah, yeah. You know, it, it deals with the heavier strings a mm -hmm. lot better, deals with the down tuning a little bit better, you know. Um, it keeps me honest, because the shorter scale, for whatever reason, I guess I'm a little heavy handed. And this has a, just enough more resistance where it's like, okay, this feels, it feels like it's kind of fighting me a little bit, but yeah. that sometimes yeah, when you're... Yeah. When you're running around on stage and strobes are going off and LJ's yelling, you know, you get all amped up. Yeah. So it kind of throttles you in, you know. But this one will probably be out. Um, it would have been out this year, but I missed NAM. Uh, Got to get to NAM to do the official release. So most likely to be NAM 2014, winter NAM. Um, pickups. The funny thing about the pickups is I've tried a bunch of different pickups. I was using I was using Seymour Duncan's for years, and we tried some Demarzios, which I've never used before, but they sounded really good in these guitars. Mm -hmm. um, so we started going through a lot of the custom shop Dean stuff, and this is this is actually a pickup called the Baker Act. Uh, Pat Baker is the guy who runs the Dean Custom Shop. He is by far one of the coolest guitar players I've ever met. I mean, the guy can just play, but he's just got a really, really good ear, and he's winding all these pickups all day long. It was his personal pickup. We took a shot, we threw it in, and I haven't I haven't ever. T I mean, I basically swapped out all the pickups and all of these for this one. It just works with this guitar for some reason or another really, really well. Um, a clarity thing right another thing you know the EVH gave me clarity this gave me a little bit more clarity too so a time capsule in the neck uh, Baker act down there and it'll be the same thing on the imports you okay. know um, most of the imports that you get here in the States will have the benefit of actually running like they'll be made overseas but then they'll take one pass through the custom shop where they'll you know obviously do a visual inspection kind of you know they, I think they're gonna do the you know the little things the pickup rings and the stuff that will usually break on the imports mm -hmm. but you know, it's a, it's a pretty straightforward guitar. It's super functional for me, and uh, you know, it's not vintage, <laughs> yeah. not vintage at all. But you know, it's a uh, it's it's a tool. It will and, be in 20 years, right? In 20 years, yeah, yeah. Fast forward. You know. <laughs> but uh, as far as other guitars, um, I only play Deans um, out on the road. I have a couple of nice Les Pauls at the house that I just probably will never get rid of. Um, I have a 78 uh, custom. All maple thing weighs about 17 pounds. Yeah. It was during the bad years yep, where they had to use all the weird wood, yeah. and it's maple, maple, maple. So oh. it's like maple everywhere with the brass nut. Yeah, Don't maple fretboard, maple neck, maple top, maple everything. Yeah, cool. yeah. yep. And that's kind of why I uh, I won't get rid of it because I haven't seen another one. Mm -hmm. I've seen a black one, but not one that's all the maple. Yeah. Um, other than that, I got a. It's like a 19, I think 90. Les Paul Studio that's all done up in Notre Dame colors, you know. It's not a very, you know, expensive guitar. I think I picked it up for a couple hundred bucks in a pawn shop and we just really, really kind of, you know, really, really did, did a number on it. And it's, it's great. It doesn't sound as good as the other one does, but it plays better. The neck is better on it. Um, other than that, vintage gear, I have one Marshall amp from 1971. It's a 71 Super Tremolo that I probably will never get rid of. Um, it'll. Nine times out of ten, it'll be the amp that I take in the studio, and I'll put it up against just about anything, just because I know what it does. You where'd, know, where'd you pick it up? Believe it or not, it was one of the amps that was on our first record. It's on the first Seven Dust record. Um, we did a we did the record at the studio called Triclops in Atlanta, and the studio owner fell on hard times years after, and he basically parted out the whole studio, sold his Neve, sold all the amps, all the cabinets and everything. And I heard about it and I was like, oh, that was a shame because he had such cool gear there. Happened to be in Atlanta, I was running through Guitar Center and I just saw this super clean amp that was sitting over there in the middle. And I went over and I looked and it was 400 bucks. And I was like, and I looked at the sticker on the back and I saw it said Triclops. And then I saw that it was a super tremolo and I was like, this is a dream come true. Wow. Because when you mod it, you don't have to cut anything. Yeah. I'm not using the tremolo circuit, but it's already got the extra preamp tube in there. So I sent it out to LA. Um, a guy named Mike Morin did a mod on it. Basically, you know, just put everything, put that in line, jump the, you know, it's a four input on the front, so you jump the thing, put the cap in. It's got a little push pull on uh, on both, so it gives me extra, you know, a little bit of extra gain. 
with, you know, with that extra tube in there. It's not super high gain like the EVH is, but it's just a cool sounding amp, you know. Um, but that's it. I mean, other than that, I don't have a whole no, lot of I saw 70s uh, Dean guitar in your rack down there. It's a Lost 100Z. So basically what they did is they took the first 100 of that lot and put them in a vault and they didn't sell them. So the first one that you could get in 1976 was number 101. The first 100 they, they put in and on the, I think it was the 30th anniversary, they released these guitars again. And they made them available and they had a handful of them that were kind of sitting around up at Dean. Obviously I was looking for this body style. Josh was like, well I got something you'd probably love. and. Um, it, it's awesome. I mean, it is a, is a really, really cool guitar. It's uh, it's it's regular uh, 24 and 3 quarter scale. Um, it has a V neck, which is real weird. Some people love them, some people hate them, and I'm kind of in between. Like some days, I'm like, this just feels alien. Mm -hmm. um, but it's it's just a funky guitar. Like when it's in and it's on, it sounds great. Right now, it's not sounding so good. It's a little funky. It's a little older, I guess. I mean, hell, how old is that now? <laughs> it's really old. But yeah, that's probably the closest thing to a vintage. But like I said, it was uh, it was from '76, but wasn't released until much later. So, you know, it's a new vintage, if that makes any sense. Whatever that. You know, hmm. Depends uh, on who you ask. Right. right George Groom right. wouldn't say that. Right. <laughs> but but yeah, I mean, uh, that's that's pretty much it for me. I mean, I got the Chet that I use as an acoustic. I got a couple, you know, Dean acoustics that we use to beat around. I don't have a really really nice acoustic, and that's one thing that I would like to actually probably spend some money on. But. Yeah. What, what sort of yeah. thing would you get? You know what? It, it, my gut would say, you know, like an old Martin or a really nice Taylor or something like that. But I made the mistake of playing a Collings, and I was like, there's no way that that guitar could be worth $25,000. And I played it and went, okay, that guitar is worth $25,000. <laughs> Not that I would ever spend the money on it, but right. it was the most amazing acoustic I've ever played in my life. It was Ed's from uh, Collective Soul. Yeah. I couldn't believe how good that thing sounded. I don't know what model it was. You know, I heard the pro I was sitting in there jamming it, my belt on, wallet chain, and everything. I'm like, wow, this thing's amazing. He's like, yeah, it's 25 grand. I was like, <laughs> and immediately I put it down. I was like, man, ah, right. <laughs> but uh, I don't know, man. I mean, I really like Taylors a lot. I like the 814s and the 914s. We kind of wear those out when we go in the studio. They always just seem to, they're a little darker, but they always seem to work. They, they handle the down tuning is great which that's the first advantage, yeah. you know, to be in seven notes, you gotta find something that loves to be tuned down that low. We've tried some Gibsons that just hated being tuned down, you know, to be, and they're great sounding guitars, you know, worth a lot of money, but whatever's kind of functional with this tuning, I guess is, yep. you know, what we usually end up using. Cool. So, cool. That's pretty much it. Yeah. Cool. Think so, we're good? Yep. Yeah. Cool. All right, fellas. Appreciate it.